Hey there everyone, I'm Ed, we're gonna play some more from Sif Kaidan tonight. Gonna start a new game. We're gonna go with the main campaign, where we have to avenge our father's death. This is a trading simulation game, it's available on Steam for $15. Fundamentally, you're buying low and selling high, trying to make lots of money. And we'll explore it as we go on. It's a bit loud in my ear. Alright, the story. Your name is La Vienne de Cali. It was supposed to be a wonderful birthday. You have just turned 21 and completed a long time of apprenticeship, supervised by your father. As a present, you were to receive your first merchant's cart to show to the world during your future trips as a sign that you are worthy to continue the family business. Your father wasn't born a rich man. He saved up for his first cart while working for years as, a, as, a, as an assistant, and later as a carter. He climbed the ladder of the merchant trade, building up a small business step by step to turn it into a larger trading group. In the previous year, he got into business with a well-known merchant, Van Tolod, and he was preparing a big celebration for your birthday. With Van Tolod's help, he was supposed to receive a knighthood. But you never know when your luck may turn. See, his last trip brought news of his death. He died in disgrace, for he was accused of and sentenced for suspected treason and attempted robbery of part of the royal fortune. The execution was performed immediately, and all of your family's property was confiscated and passed on to Van Tolod who supposedly uncovered the plot and pointed to your father as the culprit. Fortunately, your deceased mother didn't live to see it. Suddenly, everything was clear to you. Van Tolod's affection and generous offers were only meant to trap your poor, gullible father, who became a scapegoat in Van Tolod's plot, which not only increased the villain's fortune, but also brought him the post of the main supplier of the royal court. On your birthday, you had to run away from your own home without a penny to your name to escape bandits who had taken the very cart which was to be your birthday present. You were all alone. The only thing that was left from your father's wealth was a family ring, which you'll have to sell. It was in this hour that you made your first adult decision. You vowed to avenge your father by taking over the position of royal court supplier and bringing Van Tolod and his family to ruin. There's a long road ahead of you, but your resolve is strong. <laughs> Under an assumed name, you must travel the whole path that your father once took from rags to knighthood. His teachings will lead you. Good luck. <laughs> I guess they have to set up the dramatic uh, arc of a trading game pretty heavy handedly. Alright. First thing we have to do is sell. A precious heirloom ring. I know what to do though, so we'll turn off the tutorials. If you want to mean anything in the world and you were not born a nobleman, you need to join one of the guilds. In your case, the guilds of merchants. Of course. Its headquarters is placed in Overos, the capital city. If you want your candid assured to even be considered at all, you'll need to show some convincing proof that you own a cart and no less than 4,000 quai. Well, presumably if we show them the cart in a bag of cash, they'll let us in, so we need to get us going on that. We have the cart. But, let's take a look at what's going on here. <laughs> We're a beggar. We have 38 quai. No one working for us. I have nothing, no diamonds, no specialists, no nothing. We're we start out with Zippo. So first thing we do is go to the Cantor and we're gonna sell our heirloom ring. Every member of the the, the Kalin family receives such a ring on his seventh birthday. As an heir, you receive the ring that your grandfather once wore, and his grandfather even before. For outsiders, it's just a golden ring with a ruby. 
apparently worth 1500 quai. We'll get it back down as soon as possible. Next thing we need is someone to help us pull the cart around. We're too busy wheeling and dealing, we need someone to be able to watch the horse. So we're gonna go to the tavern here. This guy looks like a trustworthy dude. Bit of a skin condition. I'm looking to earn some trigons. I'll gladly join you. I can drive a cart and fight if it comes to that. I only require 40 cry and one cry a day. That's fine. Come on board. First employee number one. <laughs> Alright, so I have a man, a cart, and some spending cash. But we aren't going to be able to make any more cash unless we have stuff to sell, so we're going to have to spend a lot of this early on. So we'll go to the market here. Let's see. We have here some pretty cheap food. Three quai. And I know that's actually quite low. I've played this a couple of times. Not all the way through though. Avo or uh so what we're seeing here is a list of all the commodities available on the market here. And there's stuff we can't even buy, because you know, we're vagabond beggars apparently. We can't even buy this stuff. Wood is only for the money classes. But we can't do food and hides, and I think we can make a profit doing those. So we're gonna load up on food. Here I can control how much I'm buying. We're gonna fill up our cart here. It's gonna cost us 100 quai total, about, for 30 units. Bam. Now we're full up, we need to find a place to sell this. So we're gonna go to the map here. Open it up. And here we have the world map. There's lots of stuff going on here, but the main thing here is that there's a bunch of towns and locations linked together by roads. And each one of these spots has some form of economic activity. And so we're here in Dunbar. And we can travel to any of these towns right next to us along these roads going out. And the stuff we've bought here will have different prices when we sell them over based on the local economy and what their you know, production regime is, if they're suffering famine, stuff like that. So we're going to go to Timiva because it's one day away. We're going to try day trade a bit. We'll see what I mean in a minute. We're just going to go there. It's going to cost us three quiet to pay the guy and ourselves. At the end of our trip, we get a, kind of a summary of what happened, and it was a very peaceful day. So now we're in Timotha. Smaller town, doesn't have as much going on. But it's kind of pretty. I guess we're on, in the woods looking down to the village. So we're going to go to the market here and see what we can sell. Alright, it looks like we can sell our 30 units of food for six squad. Now, this is where we're making our edge, right? We bought these for three, but we can sell them here for six. It's the value we're adding to the economy as we're distributing where this stuff is. So, it's up here. Alright, so if I remember right, we, we purchased all of it for 96 squad. Now we have 207. Not too bad. That. So let's see what we can do in terms of buying something. Um, uh, hill herb here is basically pot, and it's very hard to make a profit on it in this game. We aren't selling anything really for us to buy. I think we can make a profit on 17 hides. But it wouldn't be a very large market. So what we're gonna do is we can't really risk a loss this early in the game. We're just gonna travel back to Dunbar and see if they still have the cheap food and try to do this again. 
as they say, armies are worse than dysentery. But you can't stop maneuvers from happening. Because the roads were blocked by the army, your trip took one day longer than expected. It's like waiting for cows to pass. Jeez. Alright. Let's get some of that cheap food. Price has gone up, hasn't it? It was... 3 quai, just as little as 3 days ago, but it's gone up to 7. This game can be pretty brutal with the price fluctuations, and so we need to take that into account when we're planning our trips, so... And we were wise not to buy the hides. They went down. It looks like other people have brought in hides, and so the price has been depressed. Fifteen for hides actually isn't that bad though. I say we buy up hides here, since there's so many of them apparently. And we go on a little trip to the capital, Overros. Three days away. Well it's gonna cost us eleven quai, unless something happens on the way. Overos, a magnificent capital and the seat of the Merchant's Guild. Spread across twelve islands, it's certainly the most beautiful city in Kadar. He who once saw its beauty will always want to come back. Yeah. They have a good tourist bureau, so we're gonna go there. You're accosted by a mysterious wanderer. He wants to join your crew. Do you want to accept the mercenary for about one quiet in a day? It's, it's not a bad offer, but we're on such a razor thin profitability that we can't afford the extra travel costs. So we're going to say no for now and go straight to the capital. Hopefully, we'll run into him again someday. This is one of my more favorite cities. It's like it's made out of mushrooms. It's kind of cool. Alright, let's see if our uh, hide bet paid off. Oof. Mm. Okay, well, we bought them for 15 and 14 silver, and we sell for 15 and 7 silver. So, it's basically a wash. Silver is a loose change. But, all of all, um, the food is relatively cheap. No cheaper than Denmark. Hmm. See, what I'm pondering right now is whether we should sell the hides at basically no loss. Like, it would be maybe about three gold loss. And pick up all this cheap food and head up into the mountains where they don't have farms. Maybe then we'll be able to make a bit more money. Let's do it. Fortune favors the bolt. We just need to make sure we can cover the costs associated with our travel. So, um, yeah, so I was left without buying the food. Fortune favors the bull, not the stupid. Right, so. Here and two days away. Alright, seven o'clock, even less journey. That's how I like them. Okay. And this place has food apparently. Maybe we can try. Rochti. Rochti? Rochti? However it's spelled, it's further up in the mountains, so we try to do it. Ooh. During the stop, you met another trader who offers you a game of craps. Do you want to play? How craps works in this game is you're making a bet on what the other trader has. And if they have a more valuable commodity that they're bringing along with them, that's good, because in the, in, 
this game, the game of craps are going to trade roughly the same weight. And so if their stuff is more valuable by weight, then you're generally trading up and you're going to make a lot more money. So because we're carrying food, which is basically it's one of the least efficient things by weight in the game, we're definitely going to do this because hopefully you'll have hides or maybe even like ore or something like that. So definitely yes. As a result, we exchanged 40 kilograms of food for, for 40 kilograms of hides. That should serve us quite well as we go up here into Rochti or Rochti. Little temple overlooking the river here. What's going on here? We aren't going to do it just now because we can't just throw away, you know, this kind of money. But a shrine. Welcome, pilgrim, whoever you are. The blind deity willingly obey some chantings. So what kind of chants do you order? Uh, nothing, nothing. We're just looking around. Nice architecture. <laughs> we'll go to the store. <sighs> This food room isn't going too well, but we can make six quiet per unit of hides. That should cover our travel expenses so far, at least. So it's a wash so far. Further, just because we've already spent on food, food is quite cheap here. It's five quiet versus our six quiet. So we'll lower our overall price. And it's always more efficient to carry stuff with you. Like, don't travel a lot. Not full. We're gonna try Vergoto next. It's by the coast, so maybe we want some food. Then cry for the orange. A stone block fell while you were passing the tunnel, damaging your cart. Unfortunately, your coachman died. The damage card slowed you down by one day. Well, what about my dude? You have to hire someone. Well, oh, the bad news continues to roll on in, though, isn't it? Unfortunately, some of the food you were carrying have, has gone bad. The proofing in this game is a little. Uh, to stop the spoiling, you had to throw out two food. It seems the price was not a bargain after all. I guess not. Five quite food. Don't need it. <laughs> now this is quite nice. Yeah. Little flag waving. Ships tilted. <laughs> Alright. Alright, we can make 20 quite here. Hmm. What I'm thinking right now is that we don't have a lot of options for what we can buy when we head out. Olive oil and ore are somewhat reasonable, like we might be able to look at past prices here. Overrose in the capital, we can sell ore for 45. But I think we can get ore cheaper at other cities nearby, just for experience. So I'm gonna sell off our food so I can cover the cost of this dude. Here, he's replacing our poor first employee who got crushed by a rock. I'm looking to earn some trigons. You're looking to get run over by a rock? Oh, I'll gladly join you. Okay, I can drive a car and fight. Alright. Welcome on board. Oh, tavern cleared out. Jeez. Hmm. At the temple, we have a little question mark. Halt, sinner. Oh. Repent. Repent while you can. Now this is a chance to save your soul. Bring a holy man to get dinar. I need to bring light to those in darkness, to those who stray, and the blessed reward may be on you. Caravion the Flagellant. 
Okay. No problem. Just be quiet. So Nara's in another city quite a ways away. But we'll head over there. We're kind of turning back around and anyway, back to the capital. We're gonna buy the ore. I think we'll be able to make money. Okay, so we've gone up through here, up through the mountains. But now we have a pretty simple, like, you know, meadow rural, uh, like coastal, you know, kind of route straight back to the city. It only takes five days. It took us like nine days to get here, so. Yeah. You come across a carriage of a magnate who, in his rage, dismissed it. In his rage, dismissed all his mercenaries. Afraid of bandits, that's what happens when you fire all your mercs. He offers to pay you for joining you in his journey to the nearest town. What do you do? Yeah, we'll let the hothead sit on the back of the cart. Keep some company with the flagellant. Then we'll cross the bridge. See if we can get the wealthy guy to throw this. When we drop him off. Journey goes smoothly and costs you nothing. The magnet is not even bothering you with talking. Nice. Seems that you struck a good deal since he pays you 54 quai for next to nothing. Hmm. That pays for the whole trip, straight up. It's a big bridge. Yeah, outlay zero. Alright, so back in town. Can we sell the ore? We can sell the ore. One quai each. See, I'm a little bit used to my other save where I'm making, you know, thousands of gold each trip. And so, <laughs> the idea of making 20 quai on a trip is... It's uh, humbling. 14 quai hides is really good. Like, we've only seen them here for like 21. Okay, 14. Okay, one place. 18 and last time we were here, 15 and done line. What I'm driving at is buy, buy, buy. In fact, this is such a good buy. 538 from 1579 is about a thousand quai spare. I bet we can upgrade our cart here at the workshop. Here we have some access to different kinds of gear. So like this is the kind of cart we have. It holds 300 kilograms. We have one of them. There's next up. It's a proper, you know, wagon. And it holds 700 kilograms. More than twice as much of us. Oh, and it costs 44.29. Okay, I was thinking we might be able to purchase another cart carry more of these hides, but it looks like we'll have to wait. So we'll definitely just load up. And we'll go up into the mountains again, but we'll go up to where the mines are. There's some ore there. So once again to dock. Seven quiet who days. Even it must I like eventless journeys, at least in this game. Let's see, here in Dalka, all I sell is pot, food, and hides. Hides are cheap here, too. Can we buy one more? Yeah, we can go for one. Food's not bad. Mm. Mm, it's too heavy. We're full up. Five days to Urgol, a mining city laying in the rainy mountains. Wealthy with ore and diamonds that local mines excavate, it has a mining school that operates here, teaching optimal techniques to the students. Only the weather is raining. Alright, I like these little pictures for the towns. They're cute. So we'll go. 
five days, twenty-nine crowded. A woman with buckets hanging from shoulder of the yoke passed in front of you. And the coachman quickly leapt out to check if they're empty or not. They're empty. Superstition demands that our luck has decreased. An important thing about this game is your luck factor. Um, from what I've been able to tell, it affects everything, like how out of whack prices are, how unfavorable everything is to accidents. So you can control your luck in various ways. But we've arrived safely despite that. Okay. Can't quite make a profit here on hides. I guess there must be deer hunting in the mountains. We almost can. Ore is very cheap here. 31. We want that. We want that so bad. Ore is heavy, but its price range is more varied. So like sometimes you can sell ore for like 50 or something like that, and that's like 20 quiet per unit. We have a little exclamation mark here. My dear fellow, I heard you travel a lot. Well, it seems that my wife left a small chest behind when visiting Overos recently. So would you be a good man and pick it up for me? My gratitude is measured in cash. If someone says that gratitude is measured in cash, they're usually worth listening to and giving you gratitude. So sure, why not? Alright. Okay, so our strategy though with what's in our current right now is we're gonna go to a neighboring city, maybe down off the mountain and sell some hides. And then we'll swim back through here, pick up some ore, and then continue on to Overos, sell that, pick up his chest, come back here, profit. <laughs> so we will just carry on our merry way to Arasimo for the journey for 15 coin. Asmar looks like a typical port city, but there is no other like this. It's famous for its magnificent shops, lively inns, and an atmosphere of constant joy. A big part of the joy is thanks to students from around the kingdom who come to the local school of magic and charms. Alright. We all like ourselves a college town. During your stay, you strike a conversation with an encountered merchant. In the meantime, your coachman makes a bet with the other who reaches their destination faster. What do you do? Yeah. Let's do it. As long as your goods and cattle are not hurt in any way. After all, such a competition is a long tradition. So we're going to race them down to that, down the mountain. Everyone tries to do their best to win, and we win. Your competition gave you symbolic two pieces of goods from a stock. In addition, your journey lasts two days less. One day trip down the mountain, or two days. You're in one jewelry and one tools. For free, just for going fast. I love that event. It's so good. Ah. We make money on our hides. Three quai purrs. That's a hundred off that trip. Good stuff. And we can sell oh, nice. them. Got the tools for free, so we can sell them for full profit. Ooh. Nice. Okay, a little question mark here. Hey friend, wait a moment. Are you leaving town? That's marvelous. I need you to do me a favor. I have a gift for my dear friend Yarrow. He's in Sultara these days. Please take this gift to him and he shall give one for me in return. Just bring it to me and I'll reward you handsomely with gold. What do you think? Why not? I'm on the road anyways. Alright. So, next episode, 
we're gonna wend our way back through the mountains, pick up some ore, go to the capital, pick up quest giver number one's chest, bring it back to him, and then we'll see what's up with this Siltara place and his friend Yaro. And signing off, have a great day. <laughs> Peace.